the joint work I'm doing with uh, Bruno Arpino from the University of Florence, who's also sitting here, and uh, Giorgio Di Gessa from UCL in London. And indeed, what we're doing is to look at cognitive functioning as an important uh, characteristic in later life to maintain well-being, but also to be able to keep making own choices. Uh, so from both a social and an economic point of view, is indeed a central area. Um, our perspective is more the family perspective. So just to give a little background why we are looking at this, uh, we have seen today that there are structural changes in our population in terms of life expectancy and health conditions. And this, of course, might have many different implications also in terms of family life and family structure. So this implies also that people are living longer and having longer overlapping lives with their own grandchildren, which of course can be of a challenge but can also be an opportunity. And we know that from previous literature that one opportunity for other people created by this longevity process is indeed the possibility or the opportunity indeed to provide uh, grandparental childcare. We know that within Europe and also the US, more than 50% of grandparents do grandparental childcare with a difference in terms of intensity by country, by groups. But let's say the majority of grandparents engage in some kind of grandparental childcare. Uh, this has pushed the literature in the last years uh, on understanding what could be the effects of grandparental childcare for the grandchildren to receive it from the middle generation perspective, for example, in terms of uh, uh, women labor market participation and also in terms of older people. So there are many studies that show that grandparental childcare has positive effects on several dimensions of health, well-being and subjective well-being. And in a study that we did a few years ago, we have actually shown that um, grandparental childcare within the European context has uh, positive effects on cognitive functioning, both for men and for women, in, at all degrees of intensity. But actually, the significant positive effect is only was only visible for one dimension of cognitive functioning, which is verbal fluency. The test of verbal fluency in this specific case was naming as many animals as possible. So most of the comments we got when we presented this work were always, well, okay, of course, it might depend on what grandparents do with grandchildren. So if they read books, if they bring them to the zoo, uh, this might be the story behind, which was a very plausible explanation, but we didn't know because there were no studies that were including this, uh, this information. Uh, we now, however, are able to understand a bit more. Indeed, we keep the same question we had a few years ago. So, is there an effect of doing grandparental child care on cognitive functioning in later life? And what is this effect? And are there any differences according to what grandparents and grandchildren do together? This is now possible because in the uh, English longitudinal study of aging, there has been a new uh, a new module which asks more detailed questions in terms of what grandparents and grandchildren do together when grandparents take care of their grandchildren. And in particular we have a series of possible activities or situations in which grandparents look after grandchildren, such as doing homework, so helping with homework, but also more passive, let's say, uh, activities. So like for example, just having grandchildren staying overnight when parents need some extra help. Um, what we do in this study is therefore to look at grandchild care, so whether the other person does or not run parental child care, which activities they do together, and in particular we will focus today on the health with homework and frequency of this kind of activities. In our sample selection we only have people who have at least one child, meaning these older people are parents themselves, and they are between 50 and 80 years old. We have two waves, wave 7 and wave 8. Actually, this information on the activities is only included in wave 8, but to try to take into account a bit of a longitudinal dimension and of the changes of cognition over time, we at least included one previous wave. 
uh, to control for this. Um, our cognitive tests are somehow similar to what have, that have been mentioned in previous presentations. So we have immediate and delayed recall. In this case, the, um, the interviewer reads 10 words and asks the respondent to re recall as many words as possible right after the immediate recall or after a while. So after a few other questions, it has been asked again, can you please remember which words I've read a few minutes ago? We have then a test of fluency, this is the one that was coming significant in the other study, so name as many animals as possible within one minute. And then we have the, uh, a sort of mathematical or numerical uh, question. I've noticed in the first presentation in this session that this was referred as a working memory test. We used it as a numeracy test. Uh, I think I will check again if we're doing it right, uh, but so far this is the way we are, we are using it. Um, as we have actually only two ways, we can do fancy models. Uh, what we are doing here is estimating linear regression models and we have three models. So first we have grandchild care versus no grandchild care. Then among care providers we look at whether they help with homeworks or not. And then finally, within grandparents helping with homeworks, we look at the intensity of this, uh, of this help. In all models, the reference category is no grandparental child care. And what we have here is basically both the outcome and our explanatory variable at the most recent wave. And all control variables, which are the usual suspects, are all at baseline, so at the previous wave. Uh, we also included cognitive functioning, the same one that we have as an outcome, at baseline in order to take into account whether the person was already starting with a higher or a lower level of cognitive functioning. Um, yes, that's it. Uh, what we see descriptively, I'm not going through all this number, but it's just to say that among grandparents, those providing care independently on which type of activity they do show always, on average, higher cognitive functioning than grandparents not providing child care. This is not surprising if you have a child and you want to have someone taking care of him or her, you might prefer to give it to someone who still has good cognitive functioning. So the causality can, of course, be in both directions. We then notice, however, that the type of activity seems to have a link as well with the level of cognitive functioning. So more engaging activities like helping with homeworks, uh, caring when the child is sick or doing leisure activities show higher levels of cognitive functioning as compared to, so to say, more passive activities that, like just being around or having the child staying overnight when the parents need it. Focusing on the helping with homeworks, we see that the higher the frequency that the grandparent helps with homeworks, the higher the average cognitive functioning. So what about our uh, multivariate models? Then here we see the first model where we have simply doing grandchild care versus not doing grandchild care. What we see here is that for grandmothers, which is always the second column for each of the four cognitive functioning, we have on average a better cognitive functioning as, at follow-up as compared to grandmothers not doing grandparental child care. For grandfathers, it's interesting that we only find one significant effect, and this is for verbal fluency, which is exactly what we found in the shared data uh, in the previous study. So different data set, different countries, and different types of analysis, but sort of a confirmation of the basic result. Once we look only at grandparents who do grandparental child care, and we distinguish between doing homeworks, so helping with homeworks, or not helping with homeworks, we see for grandmothers a positive effect of doing grandparental child care, which is, compared, which is confirmed 
for both groups, so grandmothers seem to benefit from grandparental childcare independently of whether they help with homeworks or not, with the exception of numeracy, where we do find some significance only in case of helping with homeworks. For grandfathers, however, the effect on verbal fluency is confirmed independently on the activity, but it's especially when they do homeworks with the grandchildren that they seem to have some benefit in terms of cognitive function. Finally, the last model, we look at the frequency of engagement in grandparental child care when this means helping with homeworks. And what we find here is a totally unclear pattern. So we couldn't really identify uh, any significant relation between doing grandparental child care, including uh, homework help, more or less uh, intensively. So sometimes we do see that the frequency matter, but other times the results are not really showing a significant uh, a significant factor, and we definitely need more investigation in this respect. So this is still an ongoing work, and I'm very happy to have uh, comments uh, on on what you think uh, these results tell us. But what we believe we have found, and what we believe these results tell us, is that indeed we confirm a positive effect of grandparental child care on grandparents' cognitive functioning, which is particularly evident for grandmothers, who seem to benefit on all dimensions of cognitive functioning tested, while grandfathers seem to only benefit in terms of verbal fluency. This was my alarm for the 12 minutes. <laughs> Um, when grandparents help their grandchildren with homework, the positive effect on cognition tends to be stronger, especially in terms of verbal fluency and in terms of frequency of engagement. We definitely need to understand more what's going on to probably do some more refined analysis. In the next steps, of course, we want to include all the dimensions that I've mentioned before in terms of activities that grandparents and grandchildren do together. We have already tried to look at playing and engaging in leisure activities with grandchildren, and the results are pretty much in line with what I show you for helping with homeworks. But we expect that the more passive activities do not have any kind of effect on cognitive functioning. Uh, in terms of frequency of engagement, as I already said, we definitely need much more, uh, much more investigation. If you want to know more in terms of grandparents, our research, but also research in general, we, we recently established a Grandparent in Europe network, which is now live on Twitter, so if you want to follow us or know more about it, we are very happy if you join us in here. Thank you very much for your attention.